2024 looms in the distance as 2023 comes to a close. And with 2024 comes, of course, the presidential election. But Americans might not be able to cast their ballot for their preferred candidates, as we've covered a number of times on Rising. Former President Donald Trump has been removed from Colorado's primary ballot as a litany of lawsuits in other states across the country try to do the same. Third-party candidate RFK Jr. appeared on Charlie Kirk's show last week to discuss the move, calling it one of the craziest decisions he'd ever seen. Let's watch. That's one of the craziest decisions that I've seen, and it's terrible. I mean, it's just terrible that they... Um, you know, people, half, this, half the country wants to vote for Donald Trump, somewhere around half. And, you know, if, if another country did that, like Pakistan or Iran or... You would sanction them. Well, yeah, well, we'd say that's not really a democracy. But, you know, we're doing it now. Faced with that reality, the Super PAC supporting Kennedy American Values 2024 has rolled out its ballot access priorities, announcing it will focus on seven states that add up to 183 electoral college votes, Arizona, California, Georgia, Illinois, Michigan, New York, and Texas. The PAC's founder, Tony Lyons, said of RFK Jr.'s chances that, quote, Kennedy has two clear pathways to the White House. We will do everything we can while working closely with our attorneys and without coordinating with the campaign to make sure that the uniparty fails in any efforts to derail the peaceful populist revolution that he represents. Here to talk about the PAC's plan for ballot access in 2024 is PAC founder Tony Lyons. Tony, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Tony, why don't you walk our viewers a little bit through how you chose those initial seven states to focus on? Yeah, so we chose, you know, the states that we felt were really cl critical, where we felt that they were most likely to be challenges and that those challenges were going to be expensive and time consuming. And, you know, that that those were the places, those were the real battlegrounds for ballot access. So we're putting a lot of resources into that and we're, you know, fighting for a fair election. And we feel that the American public ought to be outraged that a candidate and a super PAC have to spend millions and millions of dollars to get on the ballot when a candidate is polling at, you know, between 20 and 24 percent. Yeah, ballot access is a huge issue for third party and independent candidates and always glad to give it more coverage. The entrenched nature of the two party system is so hard to go up against on a structural level. But I wonder what you make of the decision by the Colorado court to refuse to let Donald Trump's name even appear on the ballot. RFK Jr. obviously calling this crazy, um, a blow to democracy. What are your thoughts? I have the same thoughts, you know, that I think that people who are warning or, you know, saying that they're trying to protect us from losing democracy in this country are the same people who are trying to take it from us. So, you know, we don't need people to take people off the ballot, to kick people off Twitter to protect us. We want people to get on the stage with opponents and tell us what their policies are. So we don't want people to be censored and vilified and deplatformed. And like I said, taken off the ballot. We want candidates who will get on the stage and show what their ideas are, what their policies are, what they would do as president for the people of this country. And so there are all of these forces who claim to be trying to protect us, but they're really trying to control us. So they're trying to tell us what to do, what to think, you know, what to put into our bodies and, you know, who we are allowed to vote for. And that is fundamentally un-American and it should not stand in this country. And it doesn't matter whether you agree with the person. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, Joe Biden, Donald Trump or Bobby Kennedy. What matters is that we have certain principles in this country that need to be defended. So you really have your work cut out for you. I was working on the 2020 Bernie Sanders campaign. It was a mess in 2016 as well. You make a good point to say that you have to turn your efforts towards addressing any coordination of the uniparty to derail RFK's chances, RFK Jr.'s chances here. 
So what does that look like? What lessons are you drawing on from how, you know, Democrats and Republicans have both sort of pushed outsiders out of having any real political chance? Yeah, so I think that the American public is not willing to stand for it and that you're going to see a rebellion in 2024, that if these kinds of tactics continue, I think that Americans are going to take to the streets. They're not going to accept this kind of an outcome. They want a candidate who proves to them that he's healthy, that he's authentic, that he's going to fight for them, that he has integrity. And when you see Bobby Kennedy getting up on national television to defend the rights of his opponent, you know, that's the kind of character that we need in a president. And I think the American people see that and they're tired of these games and they simply will not accept them. Yeah, I think it's quite a contrast with uh, President Biden, who I believe said that, well, you know, he'll let the courts decide it. But uh, but of course, uh, former President Trump was responsible for an insurrection. Um, how do you, does RFK Jr. hope to uh, eventually debate? You know, both these individuals have not participated in debates within their own sort of nominating system. Donald Trump is not attending the Republican uh, debates against Nikki Haley, Ron DeSantis, et cetera. And so far, Joe Biden has given and his team have given no indication that they would um, you know, participate in a debate with. He has challengers as well, Marianne Williamson, Dean Phillips, et cetera. I, I think the assumption is, you know, when when prime time starts, they're going to go head to head if they are indeed the two nominees, uh, the two major party nominees. Um, uh, you know, what, how, how would RFK Jr. distinguish himself in that environment? So I think that, you know, Bobby Kennedy has the kinds of qualities that you can't train for. You can't hire a consultant for. You know, he has integrity, authenticity. He tells the truth when he talks. And I think people really see that. And you're seeing that when people hear him talk, they're converted by him. You know, so right now, uh, if the election was held today and only people under 45 could vote, Bobby Kennedy would win the election. So you're seeing that when he's allowed to talk. And so, you know, those people, that demographic, that age group, they get their information from podcasts, from shows like this, not from the New York Times or the Washington Post. So when the places that are not censoring him allow him to talk directly to the American public, that public listens to him. So if Bobby Kennedy gets on stage, people will see the qualities that he has and they will want to vote for him. And that's why both parties, the Uniparty, basically wants to keep him off the stage because they're afraid that he will convince the American public that he will be a better president. And that's you know, that's something that ought to happen in a democracy, that you ought to be able to see the candidates, listen to their arguments and make a decision for yourself. What do you make of what the 2024 presidential race will be when it comes time for everyone to cast their ballots in the general? Are you anticipating uh, Trump being the nominee from the Republicans, Biden with the Democrats, and then RFK being the very viable third party candidate? Are you anticipating you know, potentially challengers from the left, the Green Party being extremely viable as well. I'm curious what you think that looks like and what your strategy is for this type of scenario where we could have four very viable candidates where Americans are used to having two. Yeah, what I think is going to happen is that it's going to be Trump, Biden and Bobby Kennedy. And like I said, I think that if he gets on the stage, which he has to, you know, the American people will demand it. And on the stage, he will convince the American public that the other two candidates are not candidates who they want to be their president. So I think that's how it's going to play out. I see a pathway to that. And I, and I think that the struggles are going to be ballot access. Like I said, it's an outrage, but we're going to win these battles. The campaign's going to win the battles that they engage in in the states that they're working in. And Bobby Kennedy is going to get on the ballot in every state and he's going to win the election. Hmm. Before we let you go, uh, I know there was some news involving you and your uh, publishing company uh, a few days ago, uh, Skyhorse purchasing Regnery, a conservative uh, publisher. Can you uh, give us just a few words on the details of that and, and, and why that was a good business venture for you? Sure. Uh, Skyhorse Publishing is trying to 
uh, set itself up. I mean, I am trying to set up Skyhorse Publishing as a free speech publishing company to combat the sort of censorship and vilification that people on all sides get when they don't follow the mainstream narrative. So Regnery is a publishing company that's, you know, been in business for 75 years. It, it publishes kind of mainstream Republican uh, authors, uh, some, some really great books over many, many years, more than 1,500 books. So I'm, I'm really proud to be able to combat the censorship of those kinds of books in the publishing field and make sure that in the same way that we have choice in politics, that people have choice in books and ideas. And that, I think, is so fundamental to this country. And I'm proud to be a part of those kinds of struggles, you know, both in politics and in publishing. Hmm. Tony Lyons, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.